In this lecture, we are going to learn about and create custom validators and use it. V2 has some built-in validators, but sometimes the built-in validators are not enough. And in that case, we can also build our own custom validators. A validator is actually just a simple function which should return a boolean value true or false. And when it returns false, that means there is an error. And when it returns true, that means the validation is correct and the input can be accepted. So let's understand how we can create and use a custom validator. For that, here on the ratings table, currently we are using this min and max validators, which are the built-in validators. But I cannot think of any use case. So what I'm going to do is, instead of using these built-in validators, I will create a custom validator to achieve the same thing. Okay. So this example will simply give you an idea of how you can create a custom validator and how you can use it. All right, so I'm going to remove this min and max validators from here. And there I'm going to use validate. And to this validate, we can assign a function. And this function is going to be our custom validator. Now this function will also receive the value which we are actually validating. For example, whatever value we will pass for this ratings, we will receive it as an argument to this function. So let's simply go ahead and call it value. And now inside this function, we can simply validate this value. So we want to return true if this value is one or greater than one and it is 10 or less than 10. So here we can write the condition value. It should be greater than equal to one and value should be less than equal to 10. Okay, and let's simply go ahead and let's return the value of this expression. So basically, this expression is going to return either true or false. And we want to return that Boolean value from this function. If this expression returns true, that means the input is fine. That means we can accept it. But if it returns false, that means the input is not correct and it has failed the validation. Let's save the changes here and let's go ahead and let's verify this. So let's go to Postman. And let's go to create movie API and there let's try to create a new movie object. I will simply call it test movie, maybe three. And here let's specify the ratings as maybe zero. So this movie object should fail the validation. If I click on the send button, okay, for some reason we have the same validation error message. I think I have not saved the changes here. Let's save the changes first. And now let's go to Postman and let's try it out. So again, if I click on the send button, here you can see we have the status has failed and the message as movie validation failed. So basically this ratings field has failed the validation, but we do not have a custom validation error message here. Okay. So this is the validation error coming from the mongoose. We don't have any custom validation error message here, but if you want, we can also go ahead and specify a custom validation error message for that. All we have to do is here. We need to specify an object here to this validate property. In that object, we can specify a validator and to this validator, we can assign this function. Let me cut it from here and let's assign it to this validator. And then we can also have a message property here and here we can set a custom validation error message. So here we can say ratings should be above one and below 10. Okay. Let's save the changes again and let's see if this custom validation error message works or not. Let's go to Postman and let's try it out. So again, when I click on the send button, now we should have our own custom validation error message. So the rating should be above one and below 10. If I specify the ratings as 11, there also we should get the custom validation error message. Again, rating should be above one and below 10. So this is how we can create our own custom validators. So basically a custom validator is a function which should return a Boolean value true or false. It should return true if the input is correct, but it should return false if the input is not correct and it fails the validation. And one more thing is that here inside this message, we will have access to the value which the user has specified for ratings. Okay. So in this case, if we want, we can also specify the value which the user has used for the rating. And to do that, we can use a set of curly braces like this. And inside that, we can use this value all in uppercase. So this value here 
it is basically going to show the value for the ratings which the user has specified let me actually show you that so let me move it within parenthesis and let's save the changes again okay let's go to postman and when i click on the send button you will see that ratings and inside the parenthesis you can see the ratings value which we are passing here here we are passing 11 if i say maybe 15 and when i click on the send button you will see that the ratings value 15 is shown here so this value here it basically stores the value which the user has passed for that particular field on which we are using our custom validator another very important point to note here is that inside this custom validator function currently we are not using this keyword and since we are not using this keyword inside this custom validator function this custom validator will work both in case of creating a new document as well as when we are updating an existing document but if we would have been using this keyword inside this function for example something like this dot ratings and then some condition okay something like this so here inside this function now we are using this keyword and this keyword points to the current document now in this case this validator it will work only for creating a new document because when we are creating a new document in that case this keyword will point to the current document which we are creating but if we are using it for update in that case it will not work because in that case this keyword will not point to the current document which we are trying to update okay so this is very important to understand here since we are using this keyword inside this validator function this validator will only work when we are creating a new document it will not work for update but if we get back our previous code here we are not using this keyword inside this validator function so in that case this validator function will work for both create and update all right so this is how we can create a custom validator using mongoose now there are also some libraries available in npm for data validation that we can simply plug in here as custom validators that we do not have to write ourselves and the most popular library is called as validator.js let's actually search for validator.js so here i am in the browser let's search for validator.js okay and here is the github link for the validator.js we can also go to npm.js and there we can check about this validator but i'll simply open the github link here okay and if i scroll down we can also see the documentation for this validator.js so here you can see the documentation for this validator.js and the very first thing here you will see is it is a library for string validators and sanitizers and it can be used only on string values it cannot be used on numbers dates or booleans etc it can only be used on string values and if i scroll down so basically here you can see how you can use that validator but if i scroll down we should see a list of validators which we can use for example here we have this contains validator equals is after is alpha is alphanumeric is s key is base 32 so all these validators you can find here now most of these validators are already available with mongoose but still there are some validators which is not available there and if you want to use them you can simply import this library in your project and from here you can search for the validator which you want to use okay so here we have this isn't to check if a string is an integer okay is json so all these validators we have here now in order to use this validator library what you need to do is you need to install it first and we can install it from npm so let me first go ahead and let me open a new terminal okay and here i'll say npm install validator so this is the first step we need to install the validator.js it has been installed and we can check it in our package.json file so here you can see the validator has been installed with this version 13.9.0 now the next step is to require this package where we want to use it so i'll go ahead and i'll create a variable here and i'll call it validator equals and let's use this require function and let's specify the 
library name which is validator so this is second step and now we can go ahead and we can use this validator for example let's say we want to use this validator on this name field okay here we want to check if the name is only alpha or not so if it is is alpha maybe let's go back to browser and there we have this is alpha validator so basically it checks if the string only contains letters basically from lowercase a to z to uppercase a to z it does not allow any special characters or anything like that okay now we don't want our movie name to not contain any special characters like spaces or numbers we want to have the movie names to have spaces and numbers and special characters but just for testing let's use this is alpha so let's go to vs code and there in order to use this validator what we need to do is again we need to use validate and then here we can use validator and this validator is basically this variable which we have created and it is an object and on that we can call is alpha now if you also want to provide a custom validation error message then we can move it inside an array like this and here we can specify the custom error message as the second argument so here let's say name should only contain alphabets all right and let's test it out so let's save the changes again let's go to postman and here as you can see this movie name contains a number and also spaces let me call it four and let me change the ratings here uh, back to maybe 6.5 okay or 6.6 .6. and let's try it out so when i click on the send button here you see we have this validation error message name should only contain alphabets okay so in this way we can also use a third party validator library for example here we are using this validator.js and we can use it for validating our model all right so this is all from this lecture in this section we learned a lot about mongoose and how to use mongoose in express apps how to use mongoose for connecting to the database fetching data deleting data updating data we also learned how to use mongoose for creating schemas and models how to validate data etc so we learned a lot about mongoose and its features in this section and now let's move to the next section and in the next section let's learn about error handling in express this is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.